Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. Thank you for stopping by. This story is written for advanced English learners. Ready? Let's get started. C1, C2 English Story Dreams or Reality She walked quickly along the cobbled streets. The sunless evening was dark, a damp fog enfolding her, chilling her angular body. Her long, dark hair falling in tangles accentuated her gaunt facial features, undernourished now, where once her beauty had been breathtaking. She pulled her shawl around her slim frame, rebuking herself for not having the foresight to wear her heavier, although moth-eaten, cloak on such a cold, dank night. She could barely see in front of her, but she walked slowly, her steps heavy on the muddy road, aware of the darkness surrounding her like a spreading shadow of gloom. She must reach her destination before night fell, and the remaining light slithered away, relinquishing its claim to the rayless shadows. She was vaguely aware of the faint sound of footsteps behind her, and though the evening was cold and inhospitable, it was the chill of fear which froze her quivering flesh. She knew of the terror of these streets and their sinister history. She hurried on, afraid now. She listened with greater intensity. All was still. Was she imagining that she was being followed? A shiver touched her. Had she not been warned of the evil which threatened her? She reached the bridge. The murky water below was swirling in its confined depths. The fog thickened, sodden in its intensity, engulfing her and obscuring her vision. Her whole being was filled with dread. She hesitated, heart pounding. Why did she suffer this sense of foreboding? Any other evening she would have felt apprehensive as she did not enjoy being out in the city after sunset, but not as uneasy and unnerved as she did then. A feeling of dread crept up from the pit of her stomach. Shadows and echoes played on her senses, warping the shapes and sounds around her. All was dark and ominous. Her way was lost in the fog-covered landscape. She tried to calm her panic, but was paralysed to the spot by fear. Her body screamed, but no sound came. Mary was afraid. Her mother slept alone, and night after night she listened anxiously to her screams, chilling and alarming in equal measure. The nightmares began some time ago, and Mary was unable to ascertain why her mother suffered from these nocturnal terrors. Perturbed, she crept soundlessly to her mother's bedroom, although nothing was amiss, and she now slumbered fitfully on. Mary was unnerved. She resolved that she would speak to her mother in the morning and try to establish why she was experiencing such torment. As dawn broke and the sun rose like a canopy of gold bringing light and hope, Mary reflected on the previous night's occurrence. She had been unable to calm her anxiety and had slept poorly. Soon, her mother would rise and encourage her to speak of the reasons why she was so troubled. During breakfast, as they talked, it transpired that Mary's mother endured the nightly ordeal of terrible dreams. Although she appeared as the central figure, the time frame regressed by two centuries. She was portrayed not as the confident, successful businesswoman which she was, but as a poor, frightened girl, certain that she was being followed through eerily quiet streets of a riverside district. 
Bewildered by the dream's meaning, together they researched online to try and discover if they had any significance. They were both astounded to find that fear and anxiety were metaphorically represented in the nightmares by the girl's trepidation of her circumstances in the chilling darkness of her surroundings. During their conversation, it emerged that Mary's mother was filled with self-doubt, even though her business was thriving. She was astonished to discover that all her insecurities were reflected during sleep. After their chat, she said she felt much better, calmer and at peace. Talking about her fears had a positive effect and over the coming weeks, the frightening night terrors gradually transformed into sweet dreams so that both mother and daughter enjoyed uninterrupted, silent slumbers. Now, let's go through some of the vocabulary from this advanced story. Alarming, alarming. If something is alarming, it is frightening or worrying. Footsteps, footsteps. Footsteps are the sound made by a person walking as their foot touches the ground or a step. Occurrence, occurrence. We don't pronounce this occurrence, it's occurrence. And that's something that happens. Resolved, resolved. Resolved is determined to do something. Significance, significance. Significance is the importance that something has because it affects other things. Thriving, thriving. If something is thriving, it is growing, developing or being successful. Confined, confined. A confined space is so small that you cannot move around in it easily. Dread. To dread. To dread is to feel very worried about something that might happen or something that is perhaps going to happen. Echo. Echo. An echo is a sound that is heard after it has been reflected off a surface, such as a wall or a cliff. Insecurity. Insecurity. Insecurity is to lack confidence in something. Intensity. Intensity is the quality of being felt strongly or having a very strong effect. Ordeal. Ordeal. An ordeal is a very unpleasant and painful or perhaps a difficult experience. Portray. To portray. To portray is to represent or describe someone or something in perhaps a painting, film, book or other artistic work. Accentuated. Accentuated. To accentuate something is to emphasise a particular feature or to make something more noticeable. Engulf. To engulf. To engulf is to surround and cover something, or perhaps someone, completely. Rebuke. To rebuke. To rebuke is to speak angrily to someone because you disapprove of what they have said or done. Perturbed. Perturbed. Perturbed is to be worried. Vaguely. Vaguely is in a way that is not clear. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story and the vocabulary explanations. Thank you for stopping by and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Get productive and check out our language learning productivity packs and stories on Etsy. Use code YouTube10 for 10% off. See you soon!